Hello everyone and welcome to the Alpha Rune where we play TTRPGs and have a hoot. Uh, this is not your normal screen and uh, not the full party. Uh, there's, I've only got Ethan and Peter today. The others, two of them are away for the holiday and one of them is uh, celebrating their mother's push day. Yeah. So, activities, which happens. So, we to are... these schmucks. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just us. Just us today. Woot! Actual comment. Hey, Ravencraft. We can actually reply to chat today as well. Look at that. Oh, isn't it wonderful? All oh, right. Before I take a drink from my tea, we have some announcements for this week. So, happening on Tuesday, May 30th, and for those of you who are following certain other things, uh, you'll find this hilarious. We've had planned for a little while now and have been preparing for oh, just over a month uh, our own Zelda themed one shot on this Tuesday. Yeah. It's the nice. same day as a different Zelda themed one shot by someone who's a lot bigger than us. Ba, 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 ba. Well, not That's nearly fine. as good. Oh, I get it's, to use soundboard this episode, you do, guys. You do, yeah. Hold it's, on. It's uh, it's DM'd by the voice of Ganon, so it's pretty good. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be cool. Ours is gonna be cool too, though. So come support <laughs> us at six p.m. M P M M T time. As we've got Tangerine as one of the players, myself as one of the players, Smokey and Hans Half Elven and Vaughn. And we are ho oh, we've got something fun in store for you all, definitely. And uh, my gimmick is I'm very excited for my character. There's gonna be a ton He's... of Yeah in there. So Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think Vaughn's character, the one he's planning and playing, is going to be like that. Yeah. Hey, listen. Hey, hey, ha! listen. Hey, hey, listen. Speaking of other bits, though, well, that's what we've got uh, Thursday. Also, Mystery of Bloodheim, and don't forget to check out our YouTube, where there are special videos of Hades coming out on a regular basis now. And during the week I'm away, there's going to be one coming out every single day to make up for the fact that there's no streams that week. Which will actually only be missing one stream. So, eh, overcompensating? Peter, you've got something ha You had something happen. I did, I did, yeah. My newest album came out on Friday. Uh, it's called The Coin. It's on all the digital platforms. Um, by Peter Taylor, it's me. It's a it's a full band, with cello and whatnot, uh, all up there. So yeah, had the album release show on Friday as well, which was really really fun. Really, it was a great time. So yeah, pumped about it. Listen to it. Tell me that you hate it. Uh, yeah, if that's true. But I refuse to. I will tell you that I loved it. I listened to it this morning when I was fixing up my spider wall. I don't know if you all heard that, because that's about when my internet crashed. That's why we're starting late, by the way, everyone. Internet mm -hmm. crashed for 10 minutes on my side, right before I was going to hit that start button. Good timing or bad timing? Xfinity, get yourself together. Come on. Comcast. I should really actually probably be afraid I'm com angry at Comcast. Is it Comcast or Xfinity? Internet provider, come on, pull yourself together. Hold up, I got, I got a sound for this. This is Murray when he's calling up Xfinity later. <laughs> for those who know the memes. <laughs> oh, oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry. That one's loud. loud. <laughs> I just. Stream still going? <laughs> so oh no! It's it's just of, it disconnected. Of, God, I wish I had that sound lined up. So it instead of uh, hitting the soundboard button, I hit the the end call button. Ah, uh, Discord, if you're listening, please, uh, would you mind moving where the soundboard button is? That is a tragic mistake. <laughs> Super sus. Super sad. Mm. Mm. Okay, Dokily, what are we doing today? We are talking. <laughs> that was not me. That was not me. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. 
We're just gonna have fun and laugh today. That's yes. what we're gonna do. <laughs> we're gonna enjoy ourselves. And eventually, you know, when the time comes, talk about the campaign and characters. Nine commercials? That's disgusting. Oh, gross. Yeah. You should be good yeah. for a while now, though. That time is going. But that being said, yeah. Prime. Well, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Prime. I'm, I'm terrible at it. plugging that stuff. <laughs> yeah, subscribe. Prime. You don't have to watch any of the ads. There's a thing called Amazon Prime. They have been getting pretty gross with the ads, but... <laughs> yeah. Help us help you. If we make enough, we can turn ads off. That's a Think thing. About it. Think, Think about, about it. it. Think about it. Right now, it's what's kind of keeping us over that threshold. Of actually mm. getting paid every month. <laughs> well, compared, okay, I've got an interesting start here. Uh, da, 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 da. We have continued inside the Dungeon and Dragon system, but we've moved, we've changed a lot of things around a bit. We've implemented some of our own homebrewed rules on certain bits. Uh, we've purloined quite a few other rules that I've enjoyed in other systems, like uh, Pathfinder 2E's uh, death saving throws. I enjoyed that rule, so I purloined it. If they go down, they get a wound. Wounds are automatic death fail, so they will only have two rolls in the second time they go down, and one roll on the third time. Meaning, uh, if they go down three times, it's a 50-50 shot whether or not they survive. It makes it more risky, and it adds more uh, fear to going down, which is an easy thing. How do you all feel about... I mean, we haven't really been able to do most of, most of the rules yet, but how do you all feel about things so far? Things? Mm. I'm going to have to be slightly more specific than that. Campaign as well. Like, a uh, feel of the campaign versus the last one. How... Oh, I see. All the, the change in general. Mm. I haven't felt the change much yet. Uh, so I've mostly just met every person and wanted to know about their hopes and dreams. And that's that's mostly what I've done for mm -hmm. three sessions or whatever <laughs> it's been, uh, which has been Quite fun. Uh, but I uh, haven't really gotten to uh, sort of the meat uh, of the situation quite yet. Uh, Ethan, how about you? I think I feel about the same way. I can tell already, though, that you're going to be focusing way more on the stuff we have in our inventory and what it takes when it comes to survival and stuff like that. I already get that feeling and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> no, don't pay attention to what I have in my inventory. <laughs> no, I don't have those components, Murray. Of course I do. You know I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Oh, no, Snowsmoops picking up the the food for the entire journey has made me do so many fun little thoughts of, oh, what if one of the encounters could be just a bunch of pests raiding their carriage in the middle of the night and stealing their food? Uh, now I've got so many different avenues of what potential chaos can I bring into their life while they're traveling? Hmm. It's quite considering rude. everything they have. Quite rude. Inconsiderate, what might say. I don't know what you're talking about. It's super considerate. I put rest stops, three days journey between all locations. Yeah, you did. It's considerate. What are you talking about? Oh, man, I will say, moving from the so the biggest thing that I've noticed in this campaign as opposed to the last campaign, being somebody who cares about people is so much more work. Like I gotta like pay attention non-stop because i need to know you know their mother's name their life goals i gotta know all of that for the next time i see them in three years you know Whew. that is a lot of work i don't know why you did that to yourself <laughs> well, you, you know what i didn't actually it didn't cross my mind until we were actually like I, we did like the zero session of like oh boy there's another person mm. there's, a, there's another person uh and so yeah, I maybe should have thought that through a little bit better. But it is it is fun. It's just like, I gotta, I gotta focus. I gotta, I gotta focus. I gotta focus. 
you'll so every single time you bring up something like that to an NPC, it flashes in my head that I have over two hundred and twenty NPCs that you're likely to meet already, like constructed and made. Like I have to come up with all of those characters' hopes, dreams, aspirations, what they're doing in the future. You just like, made oh, me the DM, and I kind of. I'm just winging it most of the time. <laughs> like what is this person's mood what do they what do they feel like where would that mood go which was alan's response of bathing in the blood of my enemies i'm like yeah this is this is his this is alan that's too funny but bathing in it the makes blood me of think my of the enemies. npcs a lot more though too so that kind of stuff i actually do appreciate i really like it it helps flush out details and make things a bit more real and connected yeah yeah, like yeah, I think yeah, like I said, I think it's I think it's it's fun. It's gonna be continue to be really fun. It's just like, it's more. It's just like a lot more. <laughs> gotta be doing it's, it. it's a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got some other little replies here. To be paying attention to inventory, Rytek says disgusting, and that I would hate Erst. Disgusting. Erst Earth can summon items at will. Yes, I would hate Erst. But I think that's forbidden lands, which there's like a whole system behind that. If you want to talk about paying attention to inventory, ho, oh, that system's got it to a pinpoint. It's I'd great. Not. Uh, and then we've got Ravencraft. I have first first level package delivery, bottles of bourbon, candy, candied goblin peppers, and phoenix berry jams. If they handle or inspect the bottle, they may drop and break them. Ooh. Possibly a place on the bottle as a stopper town. Yes. So, okay. The follow up question then. Given, like, Schnorr's booth is from a very large metropolis. A big, well, not really. Actually, you're outside. from a smaller town outside the of it. Suburb. Suburb. Suburb of this large metropolis. Kellogg or Altian, as his. <laughs> Vigilante name's going to be, and he's soon going to be acknowledged as, eventually. Uh, we're just calling him Caleb for, for now, though. He is from Zellum. I'm curious, because I think Peter, well, for Peter, for Snorshboop, the understanding of the infrastructure is fairly simple. I mean, you can easily imagine what that is. Uh, Ethan, you want to take a stab at describing what Zellum's like? Okay, so if I remember correctly, and I could just cheat and pull up um, <laughs> the extensive <laughs> notes that the DM wrote before this campaign. Um, but from my understanding, uh, it works both in a ring system and a tier system. So as a ring grows, it reaches a certain level, and then a level is added on top of that ring right and then the rich people pay to move up and then as the city grows the taller it gets and the wider it gets and the richest one percent are of course at the top while the poorest of the poor are at the very bottom uh where there is uh no sunlight no stars no nothing because the entirety of the sky is covered up by concrete and metal um <laughs> It's pretty awful. It's it's an awful, awful place to grow up in the dregs of those types of cities, is what they're called. Um, uh, two things. One, yes. where's Zellum on the map? It's not. It's a smaller town. Where's it nearish? Oh, okay. Uh, you see where the... I don't think I have an easy way of showing everyone else. Whoops, I didn't think about that. I'm sorry. I'm uh, looking yeah, at I'll... the full map in the brief. Okay, so the, in the full map... If you see where the the false oasis, which the false oasis on that map isn't even there. They don't know where it is. They just know it exists and Grantina does it somewhere. But okay. right about where that is, just to the east. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Second thing I was gonna say is, so you admit your character is Batman. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. There are a lot of similarities because I pulled a lot of stuff from that. But I also pull a lot of stuff from other comic book vigilantes, uh, specifically a lot of stuff from Alan Moore and some of the um, alternate universe uh, versions of DC and stuff like that. Um, 
the idea of a super smart detective vigilante yes that is 100 percent batman everything else around him is other other things with a little bit of my extras zhoosh thrown on there a little bit of my a little bit of my own zhoosh. Right over. Mm -hmm. the the uh the construction actually of the the infrastructure for Drentina had two major factors one was the the environment so desert how would people in this kind of age and era that were walking into Uradai protect themselves other than through using solely magic from large sandstorms and other great big beasts coming in to raid or attack the, the settlement or town the other one was uh Ethan telling me about his character what his the town he came from needed to be like when it needed to look like to fit the the vibe and the feel of what he was going for for his character and kind of took those two thoughts put them together and said okay what kind of town or what kind of infrastructure can i base making it kind of that gothic batman feel while also keeping it protected from the desert and uh, i was just so happened to be looking at something that was tiered on top of itself and thought about a tiered multi-layer cake and as they go up the layers thin out and then took that idea and implemented it in a city build the tallest one is 17 layers and at the top of it is where you're going to find all the presidents of all the corporations of Drentina that's where they live I can't remember and how I many like, go. and this is just my Ethan flavoring on what Zellum looks like I like to imagine that the lower tiers, specifically the tiers underneath where they're where you can't see the sky and stuff like that, um, are strangely very wet and rainy because pipes of the upper levels are so bad and terrible that they leak moist. down into the so it's moist, it's like the wettest place in the middle of the desert <laughs> for all of the wrong reasons. <laughs> A uh, question. Yeah. Wait, I forgot what the question was. Wow. Oh, now I remember. Um, how do they get to the top of the rings? That seems like a lot of hassle for those, the wealthy people. Uh, pulley systems. There are Still, elevators. It seems like it would take a long time. The uh, There are ways, if you're on the outside, to get to the top. But uh, none of you would all know that yet. The, the way to, because good old Ultian, uh, he was on the inside. Uh, the times he was outside were at young age before the outer wall was built, and then now. Very, very little seen sunshine, but uh, there's elevators systems that go up to the other tiers, because it starts with a half mile wide circle, and then when that gets filled out, and they start building the second layer that that first layer gets topped and then something gets built on top of it and then as it expands out again built on top and then a third layer pops up zone's only three layers so you can go from the outside which is at this point a mile a mile and a half wide go to the second tier of walls on the inside and when you pass through those you're inside the inner dredges and then you can go up to the second tier, and then if you pass through the final wall, you can go up to the final top tier with easy access. Ultian would have only ever had access really to the outer dredges. Access. He knew how to get yeah. to all the other places though. Well, well, he must have gone there seemingly, got some fancy blueprints from somewhere, I'm just saying. Yeah, you'll all be hearing about that stuff soon enough. Yeah, you will. <laughs> kind of skirting quite, the edge of Trentina. Quite the impact on, uh -huh. <laughs> on my city before uh -huh. I left. <laughs> And instead of oh. going north, you guys went straight to the edges of the border of Trentina almost. So, words probably reached this point of what happened. You might be hearing about it next session. Okay, okay, I'm guessing explosions, just as a guess. Uh, you shall you know, see. That's a safe guess. <laughs> uh, Ravencraft says, so are outer sections more valuable? 
at least until new levels built on top. I would assume no, these are upper less sections. Valuable. Upper yeah, sections the... are more valuable. The money trickles but, up in this case. Money trickles. But it sounded like that. It was also like yeah. uh, you said there was like outer, inner, most inner, most inner, mm -hmm. yeah. And then it goes up. So the outer think of it like this. valuable. So the outer rings are are always like think of the absolute like lowest level of like working class, right? And then the inner lower levels are like industrial lower credit lower class and stuff like that where there's just more infrastructure and more jobs but it's still very much a not getting paid what you deserve for your work if you're getting paid at all a lot of mm -hmm. like what would we would consider now to be um company towns like it's a company city like the entirety of it is you know that Union busting, if you will, going on in <laughs> a lot of these like as, out of sections would have a view, but I think in this situation, the view would be either a concrete wall or a desert. So, yes, exactly, yeah, that doesn't sound the best. Way. So, right, act does bring up a point. Uh, the, the most outer layer, while the top that layer is being built on the top for infrastructure to be built on top of it at a later date, they would have a view of the sky for a while. But it would only be for about a cycle or two before it gets covered up. Then the only people who technically have the best view are the richest ones of the, the city and the poorest of the poor of the city who cannot even afford to be within the walls. And have to and they don't make even have shoes. Outside. So what's a view without shoes? <laughs> they would have views, yeah, but then they would be exposed to the desert and the climates and that you no. Know, you don't want to in the Grintinas. Deserts. It's bad. There are things like bone flappers. You want to talk about that? Seems bad. Oh, yeah. Pretty bad. Seems pretty bad. Um, there was an interesting thing that happened last session that I was kind of surprised about. Um, is when Caleb... Uh, said that Snazboot should sign the paper uh, as like the leader person uh, of the group. Uh, thought process on that, Ethan? Because you seem to want to be running stuff and uh, Caleb slash Altion does not like working with people at all. This is just a means to an end at this mm. point in time. Mm. He prefers to work alone. Right, right, Batman. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, well, it's interesting, so like coming into the campaign, I, I kind of assumed that Snaz Boop's pacifism would kind of relegate him a little bit in the hierarchy of what's happening. Uh, and, you know, I, I thought the, well, I guess I was thinking of Ben's character, whose name is Zara, Z Zara or, uh, Tangerine's character, Teffy, uh, might, uh, might be more leadershipy, uh, types, but every time Snaz Boop has been like, hi, hey, what do you think? Do you want to make a decision? They don't want to, so, <laughs> okay. Fair enough. I, th I think, I think you're like a, a newborn puppy that has been g gifted to a group with, with past traumas to varying degrees. <laughs> so wait, I was, I was actually observing this because I was thinking about this during the week because Zara uh, to answer that question real quick, Ravencraft, it is a it is a fantasy setting, but it's a fantasy setting set in, in the pre-industrial aspect of the world. So when it starts getting into that start more advanced bit, that's an error I don't really see most things doing, so I felt like doing it. Plus I like now, that error. Answer me this question very, very quickly, Murray. Um, Almost. Moral came. <laughs> Will you let me Steve. in the future? 
DM a campaign set in this world in the very, very far future. That way I don't affect anything in any plans that you've got going on. Is that a possibility? <laughs> yeah. Can I just go like, like just Blade Runner Neo future, but oh, yeah. in this world where there's oh yeah orcs oh, yeah. and elves and uh, so um, at the end of this campaign, you will understand how pretty much anything you pitch at me, I can say yes to. I'll give you that with that kind of a teaser, uh, but I think Schnozboop and Ultian are like mom and dad of the group. Dad doesn't want to do anything. Mom really doesn't want to be the one making the decisions, but gets made to make the, the decisions by the children, who, one of them, Z uh, Teffy, is far too distracted in their own mind, doesn't under like, understands everything, but has no aspect of time, no aspect mm -hmm. of dimensions or size. Those are two character things that they made sure they specified. This is These are two things of Teffy. And uh, Zora, who recently, literally on the day people are trying to like, push her to do things, lost their best friend. And BT, yep. who is a newborn. Yeah, newborn babe. So it's that situation where I think Zara will be stepping into more of a leadership role as they get mentored by mom and dad through whatever ways. Mm. But during Which that will, time... Will they choose the dark or the light? Or the light side, <laughs> yeah. We've got two very opposite comparisons. It's great. Zara's very influenceable right now. Say that again? Zara is very influenceable. I don't think that's a ah. word, but they can be influenced easily. Currently. Mm -hmm. Trauma. Yes. Uh, yes hopefully for says. friendship. Hopefully. How? I guess just to riff on that a little bit, uh, Ethan or JP, how how long do you think Snazboop can keep being Snazboop uh, before people just get like really mad at him and there's just like violence all upon him because of his pacifism? I don't know. <laughs> that is a very good <laughs> question. Oh, that I really. And Caleb is such a a black hole of emotion, <laughs> just just sucking the air out of the room constantly. <laughs> uh, and that's why I made him that way. <laughs> I am a little curious. Or JPG, did you have something? Oh, uh, I think he will surprisingly last a lot longer than most people are thinking he will. Yeah, right. Nice, good. It's good to have a good hearted soul to keep the murder hobos in check every once in a while. Yeah, there are a lot of potential murder hobos in this party, seemingly. Well, there is specifically a murder hobo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the most literal definition of the term. Yeah. Yeah. Also I'll save a full explanation as to why Ultian fits that, that definition for next session. Yes. I will say, though, uh, I think there is an opportunity in the future at some point for uh, Caleb and Snazu to team up in this bringing down of this corruption uh, in uh, the Grantina Senate. You know, not via violence necessarily. But they're both pretty sneaky. Just saying. There could be a lot of subterfuge. And a lot of subterfuge. <laughs> Slashbook can talk his way through a lot of stuff. He's Seemingly. also pretty handy with a forgery kit. That too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You will be a good asset. <laughs> <laughs> Ultian planning to use everyone in the party for his own means. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, well, maybe this is a... I was going to surprise it on you, but maybe it's best to ask this question before I try it. Uh, mm -hmm. But so we, we've spoken of the cantrip friends. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking there's a combination 
where with friends and a disguise kit. Whereas you disguise yourself as somebody else so that they're mad at the other person when the friendship is over. Uh, I can neither confirm or deny that whether or not that would work. Is glorious. It's a glorious idea. It's glorious. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm not proficient in disguise, so I'd have to get I some am. help. So <laughs> you've got some. Help. I am. <laughs> <laughs> See, another thing, we get all the corporations that are really angry at each other. I quite literally. Are you ready? Mm. Hold up. This, I haven't pulled up right now. Here's that problem for you, though. Uh, while he's pulling that up, mm -hmm. no one actually knows who the presidents of the corporations are. Okay. Well, only select few know and know their faces and know who they are. They're kept private because there were far too many assassination attempts. Mm, okay. Well, one step at a time. Yes. I have, because I am, I have a level of an artificer. I'm a rogue artificer. Uh, I have Disguise Self. Now, all of my spells have been uh, reflavored. And by the way, Murray, I'm a dumb, dumb idiot, and I realized at the end of the first episode that I did not have all of my spells prepared. <laughs> I was able to have five okay. spells, not three. Anyway, oh so I've got that all figured out. Anyway, I have Disguise Self as an option in my repertoire. Oh, I assume you can only disguise yourself. Yes. Well, hold on. Yeah. Just myself, including my clothing, armor, weapons, and other belongings on your person look different until the spell ends. Is that the, is that one where if you cast that at a higher level, you can put it on multiple people or no? Um, no, it is not. Uh, oh, that's sister, that is, would you say bards? Bards get that? I think so. Yeah, artificers just get the one. Yeah, I, I thought I thought that sounded familiar, so that's why mm -hmm. I thought it. Uh, I think someone does have. Is, are either of you proficient in disguise? No, I think Ben's character is Zara. I think Zara might be this. I think Zara, yeah, is the only one that's yeah in he's... the proficient. I think so, I think so. Just double checking there. I think yeah, my, this guy's good, yeah. Instruments. Yeah, yeah. Got so you do have a way to clip ripper and forgery. Both, that's all I got. So I can forge a document saying that we can get into somewhere, so on and so oh. forth. You're also but very I would have to see a, a document gnome. first. Hmm? You're also very obviously a gnome. Uh, seeing a document <laughs> wouldn't be too hard. Oh, I'm pretty sure Ultian has a, a fistful of documents with him. <laughs> yeah, well, so. A fistful yeah. of documents. <laughs> okay. this For a few is... documents more. So this the system is D&D 5e, but we, we, we mess around with various things. Yes. We definitely reflavor a lot of, reflavored a lot of stuff. For this Peter's book. playing a completely homebrewed class, or subclass of a bard. Subclass, yeah. So is... So is Stitch, and so is uh, Tangerine. Well, we'll Tangerine's whole class is homebrew, or is that a No, it's based off of Fighter. Oh, it is, okay. Yeah, it's a Fighter base, but subclassed differently. Nice, nice, nice. nice and nice, the nice. only thing weird about my character is the reflavoring of spells to be tech. And um, we had to completely redo dynamite because <laughs> the stats on dynamite on dnd beyond are horse they were so you know what i mean garbage <laughs> like it made no sense i was looking at him like this really doesn't uh, when you cast a fireball is it just pure fire damage i always ask that question but then forget i think so but that's magical right that's, yeah, but that's, that's magical. yeah it's not a physical thing blowing up you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Physical thing has things like shrapnel, force damage, a lot of other things. If it makes more sense to describe it as something else or to reflavor it and redo it, do it. That, and even if you look at the stat again, Murray, it said combining. So one stick of dynamite was, what was it? It was 3d4 or something, something like, like 3D4, that. 3d4, right? yeah. Right. 
And then if you tied two sticks of dynamite together, you only roll 44. That doesn't make two any sense dynamite, to you me. You get one more. Yeah, you get one it's more ridiculous. dice of damage for two. It's it is double the exp <laughs> like it just the, doesn't. I can so, understand bringing it down, right? So that mm -hmm. way you're not rolling like a hundred dice. <laughs> but a funny homebrew. I like the way these guys do it. Oh, what's you that? go with that while I find the page. I was gonna say a uh, funny homebrew thing that hopefully will never come up, uh, but. Uh, I just found this homebrewed feet. It's a flaw feet. Uh, flaw feet are bad, uh, but it allows yeah, you, you to one. it allows you to get uh, a different feet at level one. Hmm. And so, but I have this flaw feet called Afraid to Kill. Uh, and so I have an aversion to death. The idea of taking life chills me to the bone. And so, uh, unconscious creatures gain the effect of sanctuary spells against you while they remain at zero. And if I ever take a life, I must take a, make a wisdom saving throw or be stunned until the end of my next turn. So, pretty fun. It just seemed to I really... I can't wait until you accidentally blow someone up with my explosives. God, I can't wait. <laughs> I have a hard time finding a scenario where I would have your explosives. I, no, it's just going to be a situation where, like, you are throwing something, right? And you roll low, <laughs> and it falls <laughs> upon some poor, poor NPC. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so, the uh, this is first off the SCP Foundation uh, TTRPG system, which is it's the the first book I am planning on doing a little mini series on in a different TTRPG system. Which is great. I actually already have a few people signed up for that. Uh, no, I'm not supposed to recruit until July, but hey, I'm already doing it. Getting ahead of myself. They do explosives like this. Let me get it up there. Oh, nice. So, this is the first one. They're hex based instead of square based. Mm -hmm. That's ground zero. And each square it goes out, the damage is reduced by like one dice. Oh, Piling see, them together, you get a bigger ground zero. And then it goes uh, yes. down by one dice, but piling them together adds the exact same amount of dice. So you're talking about going for, like if you had eight d12s, mm -hmm. you would roll another eight d12s for ground zero, but it would go down two dice for each hex out. So ten d12, eight d12, six d12, and twice the size of an explosion. It makes a lot more sense than you affect the exact same radius area and you only get one more dice. Yeah. Seriously? Doesn't make Come sense. on, D&D. Come up with a better system for explosives. Well, this is the thing. They probably Thanks, weren't the thinking lead. about... They probably weren't thinking about somebody creating a character specific, who deals specifically in that type of damage. That's constantly. Fair. Yeah. They were probably like, oh, they'll only use it as a tool, right? <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> but speaking of which, uh, of the uh, other larger but not necessarily as good uh, stream that you were referring to earlier, uh, have you? Uh, I heard that they came up with a new system. Yes, have they you came up with two seen it in action and or know of its so, goodness or the reverse so they they did this is turning uh so actually genuinely this is actually something because it's pushing for another ttrpg system that we should t talk about thank you peter for bringing it up derrington press is coming out with two brand new ttrpg systems one of them is can is uh it's it's a D6 system, and I think they call it the Lightbringer system. And they recently did their first playthrough using that system last Thursday, called a Candela Obscura. It's horror-themed, heavy, heavy Eldritch feels to it. The, the setting that they've got it in, and the aspects of the creation of characters and building and such. So the system is built for that kind of aspects. 
It looks so cool and fun. The character creation is simple and, and easy. It's kind of a mix between your typical dice build system and fate core build system. Because there are bits where you have to describe the aspect of what they're picking up. Like uh, what we could equate to as a feat would be, I know a guy. And any point in your RP, while a scenario is being explained to you, like if you're entering into a, an investigative area and you're investigating the spot, but the police are already on scene, you could say, I know a guy, and I'm going to ask him what's going on. So you, one of the police officers, you could just declare, I know him. And he, he will tell me, using the feat that your character comes with. Wait, how do you know it? Well, it's part of the RP. Oh, do you, you just say that feet. you know him? You have the feat, so you can just say, I know a guy. And you can only use that, like, certain amount oh. of times per session. Oh. So you didn't actually know him beforehand, but you can no, just you declare that you know him. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I, then I, the, I the, uh, the GM has to come up with this random NPC that your character knows. And then there's a, the damage system is completely different as well. You have three damages for your body, brain, and then bleed, which is the Eldritch Hori aspect of it. And when you take those three in that field and can't have to take another tick, you get a scar instead. And the scar, you have to describe. Once you get three scars, your character's dead, dead. Like, genuinely out. The, uh, when you get a scar, you actually change around your your abilities too. So like if you had three strikes and you were fighting something and you ended up getting a scar while fighting with your body, you could set RP out your damage as I take one of the strike points and I move it into uh, my sway instead. So I'm more mm. cautious of a speaker instead of a, a fighter because I am scarred from the fighting experience. So there's a lot more. It's heavier into the RP while still keeping the dice rolling aspects and simplifies it to just D6. The other one we haven't gotten a look into. That one's a standard D20 system and it's brand new as well. But they uh, they haven't done anything with that one yet. Very excited for when they do. Don't impress people. They're coming out with their own DTRPG systems. So I can freely talk about them now. Nice. It's set to come out in October as well, so good timing on things. Which, by the way, subless plug, this is way in advance. That's when our mini series of the SPC Foundation is going to be coming out in October. Either a Friday or a Saturday, you will be finding us going through a four session mini series of it using that system. And that's a dice ball system. But we'll be talking more about that on the next Heroes Feast, which is on uh, June 13th. Oh, yeah. Noish, noish. Oh, gosh, I actually had a good question, but I can't remember what it is. Uh, I have a question if you want to think about that one. Yeah, yeah, go for it. For Ethan. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> thoughts on the Zara character? Uh, mixed in with, of course, the, the Big Tin character and their, what they're doing. Well, so my intelligence is the, as of the character is very high. So I I know things about Zara that you guys do not. Oh. And I know at least one thing about them that you guys do not. And they're definitely not being honest. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So that's how he feels about him. Okay. Keeping an eye. Okay, not honest. How do you think that they will fit in with uh, Caleb's, you know, goals? Like, as you said that you're looking to use each of the party members for your goals, how do you view them as far as those, the, the, as tools, as it were? Well, Zara, he has no idea yet because he hasn't seen anything that gives him any ideas yet. But Big Ten is a giant killing machine that is like a newborn babe very very easily persuaded and manipulated so that and it gives him an opportunity to study these things because they are uh altair tech 
So, and this is how Kelvin's brain works. Even if, even when Michael says, good luck trying to destroy me, and when NPCs are like, I've heard they're destructible. That just makes Caleb go, I think I can figure out a way to destroy them. <laughs> That's just a challenge then. Like, you've just given me a challenge. Are you challenging? <laughs> Maybe. Did you remember, JP? Uh, yeah. The... What are your thoughts on running into NPCs from previous campaign and potentially new ones or what like their their advances and changements who would you like to run into who do you think you're most likely to run into and who do you think has changed the most in the 36 cycles 35 cycles hmm. it would be tough oh, like a lot of the NPCs like we would meet here. Um, the only ones I can think of are like the deity level ones, like Alibaba. Um, I think it'd be really funny to have a conversation with Roa uh, as Nasu. Oh um, that would be amazing. Uh, but let's see. Trying to remember. Do you have one, Ethan? Well, and I'm gonna try and say this without giving anything away that both me and the DM know. Um, I hope to see your land reel again, but not until much, much farther into the campaign. And Murray will know what I mean by that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I think that'll be a good time. <laughs> but... <laughs> that would be an interesting conversation. Uh, and I mean much later in the campaign. The, uh, past the remember, halfway mark. What's uh, what's your laundry daughter's name again? Did you come up with one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's one. in my notes. One second. Yeah. Speaking of which, my notes have really... <laughs> Exploded versus what my brologue notes were. <laughs> I'm already like a quarter through the pages so that I had the brologue whole campaign. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we were only three sessions in. That's fine. That means you're writing down all the intensive law points and randomly throwing at you all. Yeah. Oh, she. Excuse us, why we frantically search for someone's name? Uh, Yuliana. Yuliana, that's right, that's right. It was a mix between Yula and Yolandriel. And also a reference to Ileana as well as like, for all the help along the way, mm -hmm. you know? All right, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And to answer your question, I don't think Brolov will have changed at all, because that's not who he is. <laughs> would it be the exact same? The steadfast. Well, never change. Your laundry <laughs> will physically and mentally actually be closer to middle middle age by that point. Because mm -hmm. it's been 35 years since then, so yeah, like roughly middle age. So <laughs> God's willing, he's <laughs> he's <laughs> He's grown up a little bit. Oh, you know who I would like to see? Uh, although it'd be weird uh, to see them. Uh, Carson, who's now oh. a dragon. Yeah. Um, but assuming he would want to, you know, chat with Nazgub, I think that that would be a really fun oh. conversation to have. That um, would be a fascinating conversation. Yeah. Remember that uh, time in that know. first campaign, Murray, where we almost got attacked by a blue dragon, and then my dragonborn character just talked to it? <laughs> yes. Fine we just had a conversation. And we... to things. Like, dragons are intelligent, right? 
Yeah. They are smart creatures. Most people, like, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, you, Ultian knows that there's a rumor of a, I think Ultian knows there's a rumor of a gold dragon flying around. Yeah. If you all ran into that gold dragon, Brolog probably would have just tried to bring the axe to him. He's a pretty lawful good guy, the gold dragon. He's pretty extremely peaceful, doesn't want to kill things, and genuinely a kind-hearted being. Gut instinct of just kill it. I'm so glad that's not the case this, this time around. <laughs> there are so many things that you could just have a conversation with. Yeah. But if you have a conversation, much harder to rage. So, so yeah. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. <laughs> Man. Well, we have a couple. I, I guess Ethan works in there because it was during the Z my zero session with Teffy. Mm. Uh, but we got into like the, the bandits came and tried to rob our camp. How we just convinced them to be friends? It's like we can do this, guys. <laughs> it was that one. Oh, would have been the end of those bandits. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, they work in the guild now. <laughs> they do handle the cook. <laughs> They're the cooks of the guild. They uh... are. Yeah, I I needed a situation to try to spur both Tangerine and Peter as, as Teffy and uh, <sighs> Snozboo to think about situations like that in a non-violent way because coming from a character that would have instantly just pulled out the axe and started chopping heads and one that would start singing and supporting their friend and whatever they were doing it's like yeah, let's help them think about what they would want what they want these characters to be what they've told me that they want these characters to be and give them that opportunity to talk these bandits down i did not expect you to invite them to become part of the guild so like, okay <laughs> these bogus names i made up are now stuck with us you're welcome. More Thank to come. You. Thank you. It's great. Right. Ethan, would you say that your character, if you had to choose an alignment, uh, what's, what's their alignment? Ooh. If I had to choose. Probably in the loosest sense. The prelude, Chaotic good. Oh, we're the That's same. Exactly what I would put it at, yeah. So you've got two different aspects of chaotic aspects good. Of chaotic yeah. good. <laughs> two very different aspects of chaotic good. But Schnozboop fits chaotic. He fits good more than chaotic, where Ultian fits chaotic more than good. Yeah. But yeah. it's definitely more chaotic than lawful for Schnozboop and more good than evil for Ultian. Yeah. Just not lawful. No. No. Yeah. no. I mean, I, could, I consider moving to, uh, you know, being labeled it as level just because, like, nonviolence is kind of like a hard line. But outside of that hard line, it's just like, yeah, they're doing stuff. So, I don't know what It was enforced even more when. Peter sent me a message before when we we're planning out the path and everything, asking, uh, "Hey, can I have a forgery kit?" It's like, ah, uh, yeah, that. Uh, why? And then went into it and told me why. I'm, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're traveling with a perfect person for this. Like, Maul I mean, would happily Murray. help you put together a forgery kit. <laughs> I know. I like rolled really high, or. You rolled for the blueprints that I got, and that it was yeah. just an accident. But you gave my character the option of building his own tank. <laughs> I think you should understand that. You gave. <laughs> yes. Uh, you're gonna need to make up something like. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be a, a hard Tens job of thousands to do. Thousands of gold, a lot of money too, or just a lot of the physical components to make the <laughs> End up just having to pay for the labor. Oh. You gotta get that engine first. I mean, I'm not gonna make it easy. It's gonna be like a side no. quest. Like yeah. uh, building your car in an MMORPG. You come back with one component <laughs> each trip. Oh, man. 
Just wait up. until <laughs> Altion comes up with the idea for a jet engine on the back of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, we can go visit the brother on the mountain. Yeah, I am. For sure. <laughs> I have so many things in place here, it's gonna be great. You're getting ahead of yourself. I You're am. predicting the journey too easily. <laughs> yeah, speaking so of which, I think we were stuck a little bit in the previous campaign when you just told the other guild members, Yeah, you just stay behind, we'll take care of this, yeah. When uh, we were going after that assassin. Remember? Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. And they're like so much more powerful than us, I assume. I don't know that guy. But most of them yeah. Uh so Pally's pals, no, same level. The doctor, definitely a much higher level. The yeah, otherwise he would not be able to survive having every single plague and disease known to kibble. And even mm -hmm. the ones that he doesn't know. The uh, silence, hundred percent. He's he's probably like a level sixteen yes, equivalency yes. character, where Julian would be a level twenty. So Ultian turning oh. in and saying, "Don't worry about this. We got this." Is a uh, half of them would probably listen to that because you know someone just got shot, but the big tier ones would have said, "What? We should be saying that to you." not in his mindset. He wants to look at the clues. He wants to have eyes on the situation. Mm -hmm. A very okay, Sherlock uh, Holmesian. Very. <laughs> My character. He will left uh, that poor guy inside the hands of Doctor. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. many, so many lovely things were done to that poor guy. Filled with friendship. Sure, if you can chop someone's finger off with friendship and then have them regrow it. Middling. See, my ideas are always better, <laughs> though. I was I was just going to leave him handless and broke on the streets to be a beggar <laughs> for the rest of his days. I, he, he, he told us all the info. There's still a chance to leave him handless, broke on the streets as well. Yeah. Yeah, well, silence comes back and tells us the information was bad. Fair point. Something you all might not find out until you get back, which is a long time. It's gonna be a bit. It's gonna be a bit. <coughs> also, just as a heads up, Murray, um, if we do get back and they're like, yeah, the information was good, um, Snozboot might try to break that guy out yeah uh, that makes sense why well, we'll have to see on the time frames yeah oh he'll be uh, long executed by the time we come back or a uh, long sent to Drummond Drummond for trial and then prison or execution depending on certain things if it's discovered that he's a Trilic Union, he would be shipped off to the Trilic Union, who would then execute him very quickly. Very, very quickly. Uh, never mind. So, Julian, level 20, so he's more powerful than any of our characters from Campaign 1. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. He is okay. a powerful guy. He, uh, the, the inn, he built the inn, or he's enchanted the inn so heavily, like, Getting things to shift and move in accordance to size of individuals walking through it, that's not an easy enchantment. Do you mean the guild? The or guild, the yes, end? the guild. Oh. I'm not, uh, oh. He hasn't gone around to the end, but he does own the end. Yeah. But yeah, he is, a, he is a strong, strong guy. Very high level. He's He's gotten around. Just chilling in Pallius. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Suspicious. I'm hey, writing. what are you talking about? Sounds very suspicious. Hey, we've gotten into that hour. You're asking good questions, Peter. Keep asking mm -hmm. them. That we've gotten good. into the hour. Um, I have one last question for you all. Mm -hmm. If uh, then do either of you have any any questions? Any any other last last minute thoughts? No. no, I think it's too early 
Mm -hmm. I have like a ton of questions, so. Yet we still feel the now. Though. Good job, us. Mm -hmm. Yay. Oh, yeah. Especially for impromptu. We actually, if Tangerine was going to be here, we were going to do uh, like a session 3.5 and just do a small mm -hmm. little mini quest of the Mountain's Peak, which uh, we still may do next session. Because side quests. Whenever you're in an MMORPG, you're going to get distracted by side quests. That being that, what do you all think, my, this is my last question, what do you all think of the stylization of missions and the thoughts on joining a guild and how it works so far? I like it. First, I like it because, as, as you've stated before, this campaign's not as um, very specifically driven as the last one. It's a little bit more free roam, if you will. Um, so that at least gives us a structure to like hold on to, so that way we don't turn into murder robots <laughs> <laughs> that roam from town to town picking up jobs, you know. Well, I, I was going to say something similar uh, about the uh, it gives it gives it a bit of structure with this, which is nice because if it wasn't there, like Snazboop would still be in Palius, just like talking to everybody every session because they have no reason to go anywhere mm. um so which would probably get old and not that interesting to listen to after a bit so uh yeah definitely gives a, a bit of structure which is which is good i think for what we're looking to do here in this campaign so uh but it seems like there's also going to be a fair amount of space for uh, intentional side quests or unintentional ones, which is also potentially mm -hmm. fun. I, I think in campaign one we were, I mean we were very chaotic, but we were also like, we're on the mission, we're on the mission, where's it going? Yeah, going there. So it's gonna be uh, yeah, okay. a yeah, a breath of fresh air. Yeah, I think I told your characters a few times in char in character as one of the NPCs to the consequences. You know you can take a break, right? And it was always and no. All of us were like, no, no. <laughs> like, Why? Yeah, okay, okay. We got a timeline. We got a timeline. Like next campaign, Skip. no timelines. Schedule to keep. <laughs> Make everything a uh, timeline less and lore driven instead, which has led you all to really, really dive into lore aspects a whole lot more. I've had to keep myself pulled together. <sighs> Me and all 58 pages of me. In one Listen, document. you give me a ton of missions to do, I'm gonna knock those bad boys out like it's a checklist. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> up, 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 up. Uh, yeah. I've, How I've do you got... think it's that been going, Jiffy? It's relaxing. Because mm -hmm. uh, each of the missions you, you all picked up, so one of them is a stereotypical like side little mission that you can run into on a, on a place and the other one is something i came up with for a one-shot idea but couldn't feasibly think about how to do it as a one-shot so mm -hmm. instead i just threw it inside the campaign as a mission most of these could be run as one shots and i have a long list of one-shot ideas and a few books with just a single sentence in it that will say make a one-shot out of this and it's super easy to make a one-shot out of it so I'll take that sentence right in the middle of the page. Like, there we go, boom. We have the next mission. And we have another one. I have nice. roughly 18 prepared. And we just go, whenever you ask for a new mission, I just go through and I'm like, okay, which ones have you not done yet? And start naming off like titles of what the side quest would be called. And then we say, mm -hmm. oh, hey, that one sounds interesting. Like, okay, nice. read it, more details. I like Sweet. it. It's working well so far. Mm -hmm. Just got to see how much chaos you will leave behind you and how Probably much infrastructure much. is destroyed. Yeah, BT has no sense of destruction yet. Hopefully yeah. that gets figured out soon. Otherwise, you all aren't going to get any pay at all. Wait, do we get. Does our pay get. Your pay gets. Shipped if, 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 yeah. if he does it? Yeah, because he's part of the team. He signed a contract. He is technically your fifth member. That's... I'm gonna have him sign that contract. 
<laughs> Are you regretting it now? Mm -hmm. Regrets. Mm. Not yet. Not yet. Although we'll Snazzle doesn't care that much about money, so you know, whatever. Money's a construct of some kind. Yeah. It's just well, something that to give to other people. Exactly. Yeah, give it to me. I know any money. Uh, well, on that lovely, lovely note, we are gonna call it there. Just a nice, small, short chit chat. There, it's only three sessions, and we're not really able to go too in depth on the characters yet, or kind of what's going on. Just a lot about the world and the lore so far, and what we found. Oh yeah. Speaking of. If you would like to read into some of this lore yourself, you can go join that Discord link. And down inside the lore library, there is a tab called Iridai. Linked inside that tab is a small, it's nine pages, brief of what Iridai is. Mm -hmm. You can go read that and you'll learn a lot more about what the kind of world that they're in is, is, uh, is like. The whole yeah. pre-industrial style of it. There aren't quite tanks, because there aren't quite explodey splodies, but there is a blueprint for it, apparently. That's a thing. The Gatling guns, a chain gun, you know, that thing that you crank? That's a thing. That exists. It's, it's the old tail mobile. Old tail mobile. <laughs> Flying ships do exist. <laughs> the old mobile. Uh, the actually, ultimobile. one of my sticky notes says uh, construction of the old mobile over there. So. It's the, ult the Ultmobile. The Ultmobile. Ultmobile. Commune DM, is that who we're rating? Yes. Okay, for cool. A few minutes. Anyway, oh, we have perfect. a merch store. We uh, do. We have social media. All that good stuff. We so, do. join us everywhere. Like, subscribe, follow us on <laughs> uh, YouTube. Watch our videos if you miss anything. And uh, never forget to eat, Ethan. Don't forget the tip. Yes. Never forget the tip. Just the tip, folks. Anyway, we'll see you in a week. Yeah? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> 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 all right. We will see you all in a week. Thank you. Uh, da, 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 da. We have an outro thing, which I can do. Thank you all very much for joining us. We love you. Yes. We hope you had a hoot. Wow. <laughs> 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 See you next Sunday. Giggles and shouts